One more, a big one. Really big one. Wow. Welcome to my channel, or if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. I appreciate each and every one of you for taking your time out of your busy day to watch this video. I am Renny, and on my channel, I do finance, fashion, and lifestyle content. Travel is a big part of my lifestyle, so today we're going to be doing a travel video all about Rwanda. And Rwanda, if you don't know, is a country in Africa, in the eastern part of Africa, and honestly, one of the most amazing places that I have visited. I have been to 30... 31 or 30 countries so far and Rwanda is definitely on the top one of the ones on the top of my list I think it's also very underrated and it hasn't blown up to the huge travel destination that it could be So right now it's like a hidden gem So while I was researching for my trip and where I should go I didn't find much information. So basically when I arrived there I had to figure it all out but if you are someone who's going Thankfully, I'm here as a resource to help you find what you should do when you're in Rwanda. Today, I'm going to give you nine different things that you should do while you're in Kigali specifically. And if you are a new person who's watching and you like the type of content that I create, please hit that subscribe button. And whether you are new or returning, please hit that like button as it really does help me with the algorithm. So the first time that I went to Rwanda was in 2020, in October of 2020, and I had a blast. As I said, I actually traveled solo there and then my dad met me a few days later and truly it's the safest country in Africa it is the cleanest country in Africa it is the second easiest to do business in Africa like it's an underrated gem and I highly 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 recommend and I also visited in August of 2021 and that was also a blast I had an amazing time so I just really want to show you what I got up to on these two trips because of COVID not all the activities were open so of course this is just what I could experience while I was there and prices may change when you go different things may happen so you you know like take this all with a grain of salt but this is based on my experience in 2020 and 2021 so let's get into it the first place that I recommend that you visit is Sunday Park this place is actually really underrated in Kigali when I they don't have an Instagram page when I google it nothing really comes up so it's kind of like they, they haven't marketed it very well and most people that I met there also had no idea that this place existed so Sunday Park is a park, obviously, in Kigali. It's near the golf course. It is such a picturesque place. So if you want to take photographs, if you wanna, some people have weddings there, some people have picnics there. Whatever you wanna do, you can pretty much do it there. And it is absolutely beautiful. I'll insert a few videos so you can see me walking there, enjoying my time. Beautiful. So right now we're at Sunday Park, the park here in Kigali, it's beautiful. Oh, oh. So it's like I think they come in like study here. Yeah, absolutely. I have been twice and Again, each time I really, really enjoyed it because it is just so beautiful, especially if you're someone who's a blogger. Um, yeah, if you're a blogger and you take pictures a lot, this is the place for you because the pictures you take there will be stunning. The only thing that I will say is when I first went in 2020, the entry price was 5000 Rwandan franc, which is about like six or seven dollars Canadian and five dollars US. Now, uh, in 2021, they raised it to ten thousand, which is about to eleven or twelve dollars Canadian, ten dollars American. Honestly, it's not a, a huge amount for someone who makes US dollars or Canadian dollars, but I feel like it's still expensive for a park. Like, it's not like there are any activities there, it's just a park. So, um, that is one thing to know. And another big thing to know is that if you bring a professional camera in they charge you a photography fee which I think does not make much sense but they will charge you a photography fee of 100,000 Rwandan franc does that make sense please ask me if that makes I don't think it makes sense but it is what it is uh, <laughs> if you bring a professional camera in, you're paying about a hundred US dollars to get into the park so I personally just left my like I went there with my camera they told me the price I was like nah there's no way I'm paying that so I just took my camera home and then I paid the regular entry price 
I last the first time I went there I pay I had a picnic with a few girls that I went with but now they actually charge you for food to bring in food so I'm not really sure what the business model here is all I know that it is a very pretty place to go and you can spend your whole day here just lounging around um, sitting down enjoying the views just having a picnic a lot of people do that so yeah that's the price I would highly recommend visiting this place because it is stunning 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 the second place I would recommend visiting is Fazenda Sangha Fazenda Sangha is I would say an outdoor recreational center that you can do a lot of different activities and it is located in Mount Kigali so at the very like it's not in the center of like downtown or anything. It's pretty far out of the city and it's about I maybe I would say it's like a 30 minute 25 minute drive 30 minute from downtown near Nyamirambo. I hope I pronounced that right, but that is where it is Just Google Fazenda Sangha or visit their Instagram and you will find all their details and here I actually went ziplining Good? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, he's ready. He's ready. Okay. <laughs> So if you are someone who likes outdoor activities or you have kids who like act outdoor activities, this is the place to go. And it's also very affordable for most people. So at this place, you can go zip lining, you can go horseback riding, you can go um, bungee, no, yeah, bungee jumping for kids, you can do a trampoline, you can do ATVing. Like there are so many different activities here and I would say the customer service is pretty good as well. They'll take your pictures for you, they'll um, help you record. It was, it was just overall a really great time. One thing I will say about this place is I would suggest going with a group of friends who also are paying because then it gets much cheaper. Yeah, it was a great time. Again, I highly recommend. I had, like it was one of the most fun days that I had while I was in Kigali. The next place that I would recommend you visit in Kigali is Kimironko Market. So, disclaimer, this market is not for the faint of heart. If you do not want to get that authentic Rwandan experience, I would say just maybe avoid uh, going to this place. But Kimironko Market, if you're from Nigeria, it's kind of like any market basically in, in Nigeria. It's a very busy market with people everywhere. But here is the place that I got a lot of fresh fruit, especially passion fruit. Anyone who knows me loves knows that I love my passion fruits. Absolutely adore my passion fruit. So if you like fruits, nuts, clothing, like honestly, you can pretty much get anything at this market. But it, again, it is extremely busy. People will, like the people who work there will swarm you and try to get you to buy whatever they're selling. Or the, a group of guys will come up to you and try to get you, like them to help you. And then after they help you, they want you to like tip them obviously so just be prepared for that because it can get a little overwhelming with like a, a bunch of people um crowding over around you everyone trying to hack on the market $200. last price that's the price <laughs> no just... maybe we can buy where we give us one one okay that's better what are you Two thousand. Two thousand. But again, it's I would say it's it's pretty safe in my opinion. Like I haven't had any issues while I was there. But I also did have a man who was with me, so my dad was with me, so maybe that protected me. But again, Rwanda is known as one of the safest places in Africa, so you know probably you're probably good but obviously it's always good to be as careful as possible alternatively if you just want the fresh fruit but you don't want to actually go into the market that's another great option all you have to do is sit in your car and people will come up to your car say ask they'll ask you exactly what you want you tell them what you want give and then they go and buy the stuff they and then you pay them once they come back to your car. Sister, you remember Eric? Uh, Eric, Eric, I remember. I don't remember. Uh, sister, Eric, I remember. Say hi, Eric. And then he brought me my passion fruit in five minutes. Blessed. The only issue I see with this is 
For example, if you ask them to get you three kilograms of passion fruit and then they bring out a bag of passion fruit, you probably don't know how to measure exactly three kilograms. So they could have given you 2.5 kilograms or two kilograms. You probably knowing, like most people probably wouldn't know the difference. So an issue, but that's what I did. So the first time I went in, the, the subsequent times, I just let other people um, go and get it for me. And they're very quick, efficient, and of course you should tip them when they do give you your food. The next thing that I recommend is to get your hair braided. So I know a lot of times when we travel to countries, we do our hair before we go, we do our nails, we do our hair and everything. In this situation, I would say get your hair braided while you are there. So leave your natural out on the plane and when, or even just wear your braids there and get your hair braided by um, a local Rwandan woman or man. So I would say on pretty much every corner there are different braiding shops and everything. So you don't have to be picky with what you choose. Um, but for me, I went to New Nature Beauty Lounge and I got my braids to my waist. I got them all the way down to my waist. I got them done in three hours. The experience was immaculate. They washed my hair, they took out my braids, washed my hair, and then uh, redid my braids, and it was quick. It's unmatched. Like, obviously, in Canada, that doesn't really happen, especially for the price. So I paid about $30, which is apparently expensive, but I paid about $30 for my braids. So, you know, I would highly, highly, highly recommend going. Um, I go to someone named Josine. I highly recommend her. So if you check her out, I will leave her information in the description box. If you want to uh, book with her, you definitely can. And just tell her Rennie sent you. And you can pretty much try any style that you want because it's so affordable here. Really not that bad. It just needs a little <laughs> shaping. To the salon! <laughs> I would suggest that you do is take a cooking class at Niamirambo Women's Center. So Niamirambo Women's Center is a center in Niamirambo <laughs> that um, provides for women and children in the local community. So they have a bunch of different programs that they run on a daily basis. They have cooking classes, but they also have like a walking tour. The proceeds from that go to supporting the women in the community. So I decided to opt for the cooking class. I think it was about two or three hours that it was, and we made a lot of food. I was the only one that signed up for that day so like there was an excess of food that that we made but it was a great time I learned so much about Rwandan food so I would say if you can go with a group so it's a little bit more interactive as I said I was the only one that was coming that was there that day I, I expected like maybe other people would have signed up on the same day but because of COVID it was probably very slow for them so yeah I would say go with a group if you can. Next thing that I'm gonna tell you to do is to eat at all the good restaurants in Kigali. So I visited so many restaurants while I was in Kigali. I, that you know, I'm a foodie. I like to try different things. So I visited as many as possible. And I would say that they have some good, good food in Kigali. I have a few, I have a whole video about my favorite restaurants that I tried while I was there. I'll leave that up here. But some of the ones that get a special mention are firstly, Inca Steakhouse. If you like steak, this is the place to go. Chef's Kiss. The second place I would recommend is Rider's Lounge. Rider, I would say not everything on this menu is a hit, but the steak that I had uh, was definitely a hit. It was a black pepper steak, a hit. The next restaurant that I went to was Pili Pili. I 
thoroughly enjoyed this but not just the food but the vibes of the place as well if you are someone who's young and you want to meet other young people there there are so many young people in the area uh, they have amazing music and it's just like a vibe it's really a vibe The next restaurant is Enzora Cafe. So this is a cafe that has a bookstore attached to it. And a lot of expats were there when I went and they're just doing work. Uh, a lot of, it's like a Starbucks basically. People work out of there. But the food was really good. I had a grilled cheese sandwich but and there was a cucumber salad on the side. Chef's kiss. Like I have had many, many salads but this one was different. I don't know what they did to it, but all, the salad was so good, so, so good. So if you are there, try the cucumber salad and get a book to read, purchase some books and enjoy. And they have nice views as well. Watch the other video that I have if you wanna see more restaurants in Rwanda. The next thing that I will recommend that you do is visit Azizi Life Studio and create some beautiful art. I went to Azizi Life Studio and I've been back, I actually went three times. <laughs> so the first time that I went was with a few friends and I went to uh, paint Imigongo. And Imigongo is basically um, a type of Rwandan art uh, that has a lot of history in the country. And I made one so that I could keep it in my room and basically have a souvenir so you're able to paint it. It's very affordable as well, 15 bucks to paint, uh, to paint for the class and to, to paint. I, the next time I went, I was just buying stuff. So if you want to buy souvenirs for people back home, or if you just want something in your room for back home, this is the place to go. They have so many handcrafted goods in this store. Uh, and again, crafted by Rwandan women. So, you know, we love, we love to see it. And the third time I went was actually to do an earring making class. So they have woven earrings that are so beautiful and I wanted my own but I just didn't want to buy it I also wanted to see if I could make it I sat down and did the class it was awesome um, I had a, two, a trainer or an instructor who took me through it and she actually helped me I was very slow at it so I'm glad she was there to help me along but it was honestly a great experience I do recommend visiting Azizi Life Studio and tell them Renny sent you because I've become like friendly with them another thing that I suggest that you do is go to Akagera National Park so this is a national park that is a few hours outside of Kigali I'm not exactly sure how many hours but it's a few hours but it's enough to do, it's close enough that you can do a day trip and come back the same night so that's what we did I can't remember exactly what time we left I'm gonna say 4 or 5 a.m. and then we came back sometime at night before 9 p.m. so it was a great time and what we did was a game run so similar to a safari we were able to drive around the national park and it was pretty empty due to COVID there was really no one there um, and we were able to see all the animals they have what's called the big five which I can't even remember but I think it's like lions elephants rhino no hippo the, big, the, the second big leg in Rwanda, uh -huh. we are talking to, it's called Ihema. Ihema. Why aren't they scared? <laughs> so right now they're brownish. Wow. Nine, I think nine. Oh, one more, a big one. Really big one. Wow. Wow. So I asked to use the washroom. And technically, this is open area, so an animal could come and eat me at any time they wanted. Um, here is says for your own safety remain cautious at all times because we're literally in the wild and I, I'm expecting a nice washroom I don't know why and this is what I get it was an amazing experience and yeah I got to see a lot of animals if you want to see even more you will stay overnight and do a nocturne you'll do a night run or night game run so that you'll be able to see the nocturnal animals as well 
But yeah, we saw lions, we saw elephants, we saw antelope. There were so many beautiful animals. It was just like an amazing sight to see. The last place that I think you should visit while you're in Kigali is the Kigali Genocide Museum. So this is one of the largest genocide museums across in Rwanda. So I would say I living in the Western world, I, I had heard about the genocide. I had heard, like I knew kind of what happened, but I had no idea. I realized when I got there that I really had no idea and I learned so much from my time. I went there, uh, it is free to enter, but you can buy a tour and I think it was, I'm not sure how much it was. I believe I, I believe I paid 15 Canadian dollars or something like that. It is worth the money to get the guided tour instead of just reading. You learn all about the history of what happened in 1994 and what is happening now. My mind was really blown by everything that I learned while I was there. You don't really understand the severity until you are there and reading it. Like I can't, I honestly, it's a very emotional thing to, to go through. Um, and then there are even, there's even a cemetery there. Like it's, it's a very, it's, I would say it's a very heavy place to be, but I think if you are going to be enjoying the country, you should also learn the history of the country. And obviously learning what the history ensures that we do not make the same mistakes again. And you, they also have lots of information about other genocides that have happened across the world. So if you are in Rwanda, I highly do recommend taking your time to go to any of the genocide museums, but this is one that is one of the largest. And yeah, take your time to learn and understand and obviously be respectful while you are there. I saw a lot of people like taking selfies and stuff by the, by like in places where I'm like, why would you take a selfie here? So I would say be respectful while you were there because remember, these are the, the these are the stories of people's siblings, people's aunts, people's uh, uncles, people's parents. Like, be please be respectful if you do go there. You will learn a lot. Your mind will expand, and maybe you'll be a little bit more empathetic and compassionate uh, after learning about what has happened. <laughs> So the genocide air memorial is free, however, you can donate, it's all by donations, and you can donate in any currency that you want. There's more ethnic cleansing here. Okay, so this is to represent the harmony before antagonism and discrimination. It's called Obuzima. And basically shows how people lived in harmony before the colonial colonial leaders or yeah, whatever, um, decided to tell people that they were different and that they one was better than the other. So when you think about genocide, you have to think of everything that comes with it and the legacy that it leaves. So obviously most of the people who experienced the genocide, it was only 20 odd years ago, are still alive to this day. So um, many people are traumatized, many people are orphan. A lot of women and children were sexually assaulted by men, especially HIV positive men. So HIV, was a rampant issue which the government tries to help everyone with um, but the government is doing a good job of paying tribute to these people they make sure that they um, they bury the bodies that they still find and the skeletons that they still find on a memorial site and also they have multiple courts that are here to make sure that truth peace healing and forgiveness and then lastly reconciliation is completed for all the victims of injustice so there are some people who will come out to this day and apologize for what they've done they'll say oh my gosh i did horrible things during the genocide and they will punish them which is good so that we know that it's not acceptable and to prevent people from ever trying to do something like this again so number 19 is about the propaganda
Honestly, I'm learning a lot right now. I did not know all of this. So those are all the activities that I'm going to say that you should do for now. There are more. And if you like this video and you want to see more things, or if you really want me to edit those vlogs, just let me know by leaving a comment down below because I do want to make content that you want to see. If you are interested in see learning more about Rwanda and what I have gotten up to in Rwanda, watch some of these videos. They are very educational. And yeah, I've had lots of fun over my past two trips going there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.